this in this uh, risk assessment report, the PCC provides uh, some additional information, but there is nothing particularly new. There are more precise information. The uncertainty has been reduced with respect to the previous report. So there are no statements that are more solid than in, than in the past about the causes, for example, of climate change, the probability that the climate change is induced by greenhouse gas emissions and which are induced by human behavior or societal behavior has largely increased and has become almost a certainty. Okay, we have much more data. Thousands and thousands of papers have been published in, the, in, this, uh, in this subject. And basically, uh, there are three main aspects, I would say, that uh, can be underlined on this. The first is on greenhouse gases. We know quite well that we never reached over the last uh, 800,000 years the levels that we are experiencing today. On 9th of May this year, we touched the uh, 400 uh, ppmv of CO2 in Mauna Loa away. And um, we never had this uh, over the last uh, eight climatic cycles. Even before, I would say, when we had the warmer period, let's say 3.3, 3 million years ago, uh, we had the temperature that were uh, about uh, 2.5 to 3 degrees higher than, than today. So we, we know much, much better about the sensitivity of climate uh, in, uh, in respect to greenhouse gases. That's certainly something that we know. And something that we know quite well now is the timing on glacial interglacial changes regarding the CO2 and, uh, and, uh, and temperature who is coming first. And we know now with much, much better accuracy that uh, the uh, changes in CO2 and temperature are synchronous. Uh, this new report also emphasizes that climate change is going to be very asymmetric across across different regions of the world and there are regions like the Arctic which are likely to be more impacted in the coming years, more quickly impacted by climate change in other regions that will not be impacted in the short term and will not be even impacted in the long term. Yeah, Arctic is a very delicate region uh, for climate change. We know that there is amplification of the temperature, for instance, that is happening in the Arctic and that's led to the uh, shrinking sh uh, um, shortage of the, of the sea ice extension over the last uh, few years. But as you said, I mean, we had an inversion in the tendency this year, which is important, I mean, but this is part of a general trend. So we are experiencing since many years now a decreasing trend and uh, this uh, uh, increase of this last years, I mean, is, uh, is part of the noise in the system. What is even more important, apart from the, from the extension of the ice, which is important for the albedo and the albedo feedback system on climate, is also the ice thickness. And that's what we are losing. We are not just losing surface, but we are losing quite a lot of mass of ice in the Arctic. That uh, is true for the sea ice, but it's true also for the continental ice, like in Greenland, for instance, which is losing mass year by year, uh, many, many, uh, many, many, square cubic kilometers of ice in many years. You can consider monsoon, so you have several monsoons every in the world. And uh, considering the monsoon as, as, as a global monsoon, you can say that you, you, will, you will have um, longer seasons, monsoon season. So the uh, beginning, the beginning of the monsoon will be earlier in the, in, the, in the development. And also the ending phase of the monsoon uh, will change the date and this is quite relevant if you if you need to plan to manage for instance agriculture uh, or water management cycles tropical cycles do so you know that um, most of the some of part of the tropical cyclone can provoke uh, hurricane and can be quite destructive and cause a lot of uh, economic and uh, social losses uh, in that case, I think uh, there is a, a good uh, evaluation of the fact that the change will be uh, will be a few respect to the present uh, climate. So there is, I think, a, a good assessment of what will happen in terms of tropical of tropical cycles. Uh, so for the Mediterranean area, for instance, uh, there have been a, for sure uh, a conf it's been confirmed that, for instance, there will be a reduction in rainfall in precipitation over the uh, southern Mediterranean, for instance, for summer. But the quantification of this reduction has been detailed and the use of more and more uh, simulation, a different kind of simulation available now for this uh, report is, a, is a really an advancement with respect to AR4, I would say.
Being a reproduction of the real world, sometimes they are as complex to understand as the real world. Uh, so, uh, the development of models is a crucial component of the progress of the knowledge, of our knowledge of uh, climate and the climate dynamics. In the past 20 years, we have seen outstanding successes. Um, the models have developed into a very detailed room reproduction of what the climate is doing. Uh, we have made enormous progress in understanding what are the major physical mechanisms that uh, are in play. We also have made major progress in understanding how the different components of the climate system can interact with each other. Uh, we have been also developing uh, uh, very much into the direction of uh, transforming the information produced by the model in usable, actionable information on the side of uh, downstream applications and uh, um, we are also understood better how they can be inserted into the decision uh, making process. So which kind of regional processes are relevant for climate change and how we can quantify the change related to, the, to, to these processes. This is quite important because most of the uh, decision maker or the policies are at regional scales. For instance, we now understand that risk is going to be a major uh, analysis uh, component of uh, how we understand climate. And the models uh, are making sense as a component of a more general risk analysis system. Uh, we understand that very well. We also understand that uh, climate simulations are not weather forecasts. They are not forecasts. They must be used in a different way, basically by estimating probability and um, um, assessing possible scenarios of what is the Earth's future. The fact that we have more precise information on physical impacts uh, uh, or on, on climate changes in different regions of the world has an important, has important implication for working group two that has to identify uh, impacts in specific sectors uh, from agriculture and use, forestry, water and so on and so forth. This is important also for, policy, for the policy dimension because if we want to talk about adaptation to climate change, and adaptation is certainly the new thing coming out from uh, this assessment report uh, because uh, uh, again an important result of, of, the, of the Stockholm report, of the Working Group 1 report, is that uh, the persistent effect, the persistence of climate change is going uh, to be the real problem. There are changes that are now irreversible. There are no nothing we can do, even though we, we even if we are able to reduce emissions in the coming years, this is not going to reduce the size of emissions which are already in the atmosphere. And the impacts coming out are driving from these uh, from this type of emissions, of course, are going to persist over the years, and we need to adapt to these changes. And this this uh, this focus on adaptation is certainly. Uh, dependent uh, and relevant because of the results of what we do. So the implications are certainly very important both for, for impacts and for policy decisions.